have like four or five iterations of that. <laughs> we thought that was going to be the easiest thing too. Like it was going to just be a bada bing, bada boom, you're done. Yeah. It took a couple tries to get the easiest way to do it. Yeah, and that ended up being... The laziest way to do it, I should say. <laughs> easiest way was just to put the spark plug in the vice and start hacking on it. Yeah, the laziest, laziest man of the job. Yeah. The hardest job. Yeah, I wanted to use the drill. Yep, yeah, so we used the drill. <laughs> uh, probably not the safest thing we've ever done, but, you know, around no. here a lot of times, folks, safety third, maybe fourth, but... <laughs> safety fourth... <laughs> All right, so um, it ended up, though, we've got them all pulled down. I mean, that's not something you're going to do every day. Yeah, it's a daily driver. You're throwing a plug, a set of plugs in it. You're not going to cut them apart. This is mainly for drivability issues. If you're drag racing. Um, they make a you, tool for that, right? Yes, there is a special tool to cut plugs apart. Which, uh, it's like 50 bucks. And it's too but, I mean, how often would we use it? I mean, what we did yeah. today is something the average guy's going to do in his shop. He's going to just go in and pull the plugs out of it. And if it cut them with the hacks off. You really wants to know what's going on completely with the plugs, which is what you're going to go over next. Yeah. Um, I also went out and bought this, and it is apparently very happy to see us. <laughs> this is different than the other endoscope that I had. I don't know if it's a bore scope, whatever you want to mm -hmm. call it, because this one actually is stiff. <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> so... Theoretically, we should be able to take this, kind of kink it over, and point it where we want to go yeah, inside the, the cylinder bore, bore yeah. just to see what we got going on down in number three. Because last week we talked about we had an issue. Number three was not happy. So this week what we're going to try to do is take this bore scope, throw it down in the hole, and see what happens with it. Um, beyond that, what he's going to do next is he's done all the research on this. He's going to talk to you. <laughs> we're not going to go in deep detail. Yeah. Because you don't really I, I need... am not an expert on this in the beginning. My forte is diesels, but I've done this a few times. And, and you really don't need to know a ton to know what you need to see. We're also yeah. going to put a link below me here to the website so that you can go out there and take a look at what plug readings are supposed to be. You can go out on Google and find this stuff too on what's going on yeah. when you're just looking at a standard set of plugs that you're not pulling it down like we've done here. And he's going to talk to you right now about the reasons why you want to pull the plug the way he's done this. And I'm going to take my happy borescope. Go stick it in a hole. <laughs> I'm going to get demonetized. As long as it doesn't come back soft. <laughs> demonetized. <laughs> all right. Now, we have all of our spark plugs here. I've gone in with the hacksaw, like we said, and cut all the grounding material off so we can see all of the porcelain. So there are a couple spots on a spark plug porcelain that represent a time at a certain throttle. Uh, and again, I'm not an expert on this, so take this with a grain of salt. All right, so right about at that level up is your idle mixture. Mid of the spark plug here is your cruising. And then down here at the bottom, where you can't see it if you don't cut this off, is your wide open throttle mix. Now, if you're at a drag strip doing this and you go for a run for a quarter mile at wide open throttle, all of this is going to be burnt off and the only reading that you'll have is wide open throttle reading. So when you do wide open pulls, typically it kind of resets the porcelain so you can't get a good reading, but this thing's just been cruised around. So we have a pretty good idea of what it's running like pretty much on all cylinders. So as you can see, most of these plugs are pretty tan at the tips. These two are getting fuel fouled from the carburetor. We've got a boiling issue. We think it's dripping and it's just running raw fuel down into the backs of these two. We're gonna kind of ignore them, but the tips of all of these are pretty light and tan. So I believe our idle mixture is good. It's a little on the lean side in the front. And that, but when you look at the bottom of all of these plugs, every single one of them is very rich. So what we wanna do is probably put a smaller secondary jet in and maybe a bigger primary, just a smidge. Uh, we're talking about maybe flipping the jets. I'm not sure about that, but just a little bit of tuning on it. But otherwise, the mixture is pretty good overall. None of them are fully fouled except for these two, which is a carburetor issue. Now, all of the spark plugs have a pretty good timing mark on the straps themselves. So I'm gonna turn this one towards you so you can see it. All right, so on, a, on the grounding strap, you can see where your timing is. If you see right here, right about where the tip of this screwdriver is, the color changes 
and the little powderized bits on the top are no longer at the bottom. That's actually where the grounding strap is getting hot enough to burn that off. Now you want to, for optimal performance, you want that mark to be in the middle of the 90 to the base of the grounding strap. So we're running with it right about there. So our timing's pretty good. If it's high on the strap, so it's more towards the electrode, you want to advance your timing. If it's down here where it's welded, you want to retard your timing because you're running too hot. Now there's no damage to any of these porcelains, no damage to any of the grounding straps. I don't see anything that's gone through them. Uh, there's no powdering. If you're getting pre-detonation, pre you'll have a black powder, like it looks like black charcoal embedded into the porcelain. None of that is present. All right, if you see that little black spot, that's kind of what pre-detonation looks like on a set of plugs, but it's more speckled and it's all over. It looks almost like black glitter that's embedded into the porcelain. So we look good on timing, which is surprising because I believe we're running 35 or 36 degrees total timing on this engine. And it's really happy with it. It's on all the holes, grounding straps are good. So really overall, the engine's not in bad health. Um, but like we said, we're probably gonna change the secondary jets out to a smaller one. Maybe mess with the primaries, but little lean and cruising's not bad for fuel economy. Um, and it's not burning the plugs up, so I'm not too unhappy with it. And like I said, I'm not an expert on this. There are tons of tons of articles on Google, wonderful pictures that give you breakdowns of every single possible combination of spark plug readings and what they look like. So you have really good reference and I recommend looking that up because I am not an expert. I'm just a kid. <laughs> All right, well, hopefully Jeff has uh, still got his little stiffy thing going on. And we'll get a reading look at this hole. Well, we'll put the bore scope down inside of the uh, cylinder here. The cylinder walls on this thing are pretty shiny, but there is still some evidence of cross hatching. It's going to be kind of hard for me to show this to you because this thing is like trying to drive a mule that doesn't want to go where you want it to go. Um, piston is also real dirty on top. That tells me that we were probably right about our estimation of this being an issue with a ring problem. Uh, we don't know if we have a ring that's just gotten, was it maybe it'd be in the bore and rusty because over on the other side of the cylinder walls here, if I can get to it, you can see at the top of the frame there, it looks like there may be some uh, water seepage inside the cylinder. You can also see the cross hatching in there uh, in the cylinder. If I can get it up to the very edge, uh, maybe on the other side, I can show you there's not a lot of wear in this cylinder like there can be on the, like on the engine I showed you over on Manic Mechanic, where you have an actual ridge there. There's no ridge that we can discern at the top edge of this thing. I would say that, I can't believe I'm going to say this, I would say we probably would possibly do an end frame uh, and basically try to pull the intake and the heads, which means we're going to probably bust bolts and then have to go and do a different set of heads and a different intake manifold because we're going to jack a lot of stuff up trying to take it off. The other part of me says just leave it the heck alone and don't do anything with it and just let that cylinder be what it is while we're uh, driving it right now. That's the top edge of the cylinder wall and you can see that there really is no ridge there in the frame. And I'm trying to keep this thing, again, this is not like standard camera work here, folks. I'm trying to keep this where you can see it. But looking at it, I think we could probably run what we've got. Uh, or, like I said, go in and do an end frame where we just pull the piston out and re-ring it. Uh, if we go and start doing dingle ball honing and all that kind of stuff on this thing, I think we're going to end up with an issue of we might as well pull the engine out. If we're going to do that, we might as well do this. You know what I mean? I'm going to pull Cam back in here. We're going to talk about it a little bit. Uh, but for right now, I'm kind of done with what we're looking at. You know, it was, it was a good little 20 bucks, 26 bucks spent on the uh, endoscope slash, uh, you know, bore scope. So if you ever have a problem and you want to do your own proctology exams and look at what your intestines look like, you have the ability to do that with this rigid tool. Mm, that's, that sounds bad. I'm just going to leave this and close the hood. <coughs> Took your phone out from there, right? Yeah. <laughs> Been there, done that. <laughs>
<laughs> a little crack right in the middle of the screen. <laughs> Brand new phone too. I just replaced mm -hmm. it from the, we wrecked it doing welding videos. You know, Logan had to jinx me by saying, hey man, you sure you want to put the phone? Actually, with Logan's, hey man, you sure you want to put the phone underneath there? You might get welding stuff on it. Nah. And I said, nah, that never happened before. <laughs> get a nice little sizzle from that screen protector. <laughs> and then the, literally two weeks after that, I was like, I'm okay with this. I got the little repair kit. I'll repair mm -hmm. it. I get out of the truck. I've never dropped my phone flat faced on the pavement. I've always stopped that from happening somehow. Mm -hmm. And I forgot that I had set it on the seat right here. Mm -hmm. So when I slid out, it went out and went smack Ooh. face down, cracked the middle of the screen. And I can't, that, no, there's things that I just can't do. <laughs> That's one of them I just can't do it. I can't, I can't yeah, do no, that. that. It drives me crazy. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. Um, well, what do you think? I mean, honestly, what's your thought process on this? Uh, I would re-ring it at the minimum, dingle ball hone it preferably because the cross hatching is slightly worn, but all the other cylinders are probably at the same cross hatch level, so re-ring it and run it. It looks like the head gasket might be seeping when it's cold. I noticed that we had a little bit of rust up at the very yeah, top. Coolant's low, mm -hmm. there's water trails going down it, but the piston's clean, so it's not getting water when it's hot. But it's also oily, which I don't know. I mean, I go we back did, and forth. We did squirt oil on it last week, but you've run it a couple of times. should have burnt off by now. Yeah, but there's just residual stuff yeah. on the top of it. A lot of residual on the top yeah. of that. More than should. From, yeah, from yeah. the idea of an oiling problem yeah, from the bottom. Yeah, worn, yeah. yeah. Put worn piston rings and maybe some And the gloss on the cylinder walls kind of indicates that as well. I mean, because here's the problem I have. polished. <laughs> you could shave in them. <laughs> um, the, the problem I have with where we're at with it right now is do we pull the engine out and rebuild it? Yeah. The, and um, why? Because we're, we've got a 390 yeah. in the Galaxy that I really want to put some effort into. Mm -hmm. Do I really want to put a ton of effort into this thing? I mean, part or, of me is almost like just... Or do we use this as a warm-up, so to speak, on the FEs? Because I haven't done anything with FE before. I have. That's and why I'm really things, trying to yeah, avoid I, it. I know these things are terrifying <laughs> to pull an intake off of. It's hideous. Yeah. Plus, it's got the 98, literally 98-pound intake yeah. on there. It is 100 pounds worth of iron. Yeah. And those bolts love to snap. And they snap. And then they, and if you really get lucky, the head snaps off. It doesn't snap down in the shank somewhere. Yeah. No, it so snaps can, right beneath the head. So you can't really do anything except pull the heads at, and then take at the same time. And then you got a 300 pound setup <laughs> rather than yeah. just a 98 pound setup. At which point you're going to want the full front clip off to deal with it. Yeah. So. I'm real tempted to just run what we brung and leave it alone. It's almost one of those things where it's running decently enough. Yeah. Um, what I'd like to do is pressure test it, pressure test the coolant system and see if it leaks overnight. Yeah, which I don't have a good pressure yeah. tester, if so it, I got wrecked, so. If it does, the way it's sitting, I would almost bet you could retorque the head and maybe get it to seal again when it's cold and maybe run it. Yeah, but it. then you're still running with You it. still have piston rings that are bad, but you fixed part of the cause. I tell you what, guys, do me a favor. Leave a comment in the section below Tell me what you think I ought to do. That doesn't mean I'm going to do it. <laughs> but I'd like to know what you think. Because my opinion is, right now, it runs good enough. The big block 390. I mean, one cylinder being a little down is like having a 352 now. Yeah. Or so, uh, any Chevy engine. Or, <laughs> come on! <laughs> right, <laughs> on fire. People scurrying off of the trees. Looks like a Russian had, tank on had, fire. Had to throw it in there. What's the T noise? T90s now? I don't know what yeah. that. The Ukrainian guy with a little <laughs> bottle farm rocket. tractor coming out after it. <laughs> <laughs> Buy one, get one free. Oh, you too can work in the Ukraine. Um, I guess that's really it. We just want we want to know what you think about it. So leave us a comment in the section below to let us know what you think we ought to do. Do we should we pull it out? And at the very least, do a dingle ball hone on the block. Because if I'm going to do a dingle ball hone, I am not leaving this thing in frame. Just simply because... Yeah, there, there's a ton of crud left over. It's just there's a lot. I mean, anytime you work with any kind of sanding material, you're losing sanding material because you're sanding. Yep. And you're getting material off of the... It's just a lot of y mess. You, you can do it. There's no, there's absolutely, oh, absolutely yeah. you can do it. It's just not a preferred uh, process. I watched a friend of mine rebuild a small block 400 in a Chevy, you know, Chevy yeah. pickup truck. Okay. Yeah. In the engine bay. I mean, he just basically redid it, dingle ball honed it in the engine bay. Mm -hmm. Ran like a year. <laughs> hey, 
If it wasn't running before, though, it's a year more than it did. <laughs> he spent like two weeks on it. I'm like, couldn't you just pull the engine out and had somebody yeah, build it for you? Yeah, at that point, just pull the engine out. I don't know. So I'm, I'm kind of in that mindset with it. Um, while we're thinking about mindsets, let's put you in the mindset of subscribing to the channel. Uh, we're looking for 100,000 subscribers at this point because we are on our march. We're right around 90, I think, at this point mm -hmm. in the thing. I haven't looked at it in about a week because I get so nervous when I do look at it. It's really just something I want that stupid plaque from the guys at YouTube. I'm sure that by the time when I hit 100,000, the way things have been with these guys in the past, as soon as I hit that 100,000, they'll change it to where it has to be 180,000. You're going to get an NFT of the plaque. <laughs> You got close, son, yeah. but we moved the mark. You got to change it to your uh, thumbnail. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Almost there. It's all your plaque. It's, it's just it. That's all you get. Is a little, yeah, or that. They'll take the plaque and they'll yeah. give you something like a like a thumb drive yeah, with a yeah. congratulatory <laughs> letter. PDF. <laughs> anyway, 100,000 subscribers helps us get a lot more things done. It's not just that. It does help us inside of YouTube in a lot of ways. I am not sure what all of those are, but people have told me, yeah, you really need to get to 100,000. It changes things. It's already changing things because I'm getting, you know, business requests from companies in China wanting me to offer beauty aids because they liked our video so much. Or the, or the you seen this do face? <laughs> I mean, have you seen this face? Beauty aids? Seriously? Anyway, <laughs> while we're on the subject of beauty aids, you should join our Patreon group. I don't know why that goes together. In the Patreon group, we have monthly meetings. $10 a month, you get you monthly meetings with me. We sit down, we have a ball, we talk to each other, we do tech support stuff with guys. I am there for you a little bit more than I can be in some other instances if you're a member of the Patreon group, because let's face it, you're putting your money where your mouth is, so you are actually putting money in our pockets to help us keep Andrew employed and you know buy pizzas and stuff on Saturday for the kids that do come in here and work because we do work with young people teaching them the trade of what we are doing here not necessarily the mat or the uh, machine work and all that kind of stuff we're going on the cars but how to operate a camera how to come in here and become a productive member of a film crew and this really training in that way so that helps go toward us being able to do things with them and for them to get them in here and working a little bit because we like to give them a little bit of money so that they can go spend it on, you know, well, for Andrew, it's rehab. But there are other kids that are in here, they're actually, you know, buying candy and, and sodas. This is not going where I wanted it to go. Um, so anyway, please support our Patreon group. Like I said, $10 a month level, you get monthly meetings with me. You also get, as a member of the Patreon group, additional small tech videos that Andrew and I shoot and put up. Um, we're also being a little more active on the Patreon page with posting up things about the building construction and all that that you're not going to see even in the videos. You get to see them as a Patreon person before anybody else gets to see some of this stuff. And it's just photos and me writing information. But people have told me they're funny and fun. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure. Okay. I like it. Picasso. <laughs> Picasso. <laughs> you have to be a person that consumes thousands yeah, and thousands internet of memes. hours. Yeah, internet memes <laughs> to understand that one. Um, I guess that's it, folks. Do me a favor, be nice to each other, be kind to each other, love on each other. You guys have a great week, and we'll see you next time on Auto Resto Mod. I don't know what to do. <laughs> get a beer. Hey, hey, I like this plan. Let me get a beer. He's gonna go first, which means I won't probably won't get a beer. So I don't think there's like two of them left in the fridge. Go drink both of them before I can get down there. I'm talking to you right now while he's walking out the door. He walked out the door. My beer is gone. Thanks, guys. My beer is gone.